This is the fastest gaming system I've ever built. Packed with the latest and greatest from both NVIDIA and AMD, the RTX 5080 and 9800 X3D, the ingredients for both a expensive and powerful in-game PC. And it all fits inside the Form T1, the case the size of a shoebox. At the heart of it all is the RTX 5080 Finals Edition, the third best car you can currently buy at the moment. The 5080's flow-through design does add some new challenges to the scenario. Now, the 5080 does take one step forward and one step back in regards to the small form factor community with its flow-through design. This does require you to modify your Form T1, but I promise it's nowhere near as hard as you might think. While it is only marginally better than the 4080 and 4080 Super, the 5080 has a surprising amount of overclocking headroom available. Despite only being a few degrees warmer and pulling a lot more power than the 4080 Super. Unboxing the 5080, you get a new yet understated experience with now 100% recyclable material. In the box, we get the 12 volt high power 600 watt adapter, which is super flexible and much better than the short, stiff cable we got with the 40 or 30 series cards. The 16 pin adapter is now angled, reducing some incompatibilities with some reference style design cases. I'm using a custom set of cables from my DIY, these white civil wire cables, which are unsleeved. I chose these because I wanted to reduce the amount of space taken up inside the build just for better airflow. Starting with the CPU, we have the Ryzen 7 9800X3D, the fastest gaming chip on the market. And if you can manage to find it in stock, it'll squeeze all the gaming performance out of the 5080. From the motherboard, we're going with the ASUS X670EI, a mini ITX board from the Ryzen 7000 Air, which is perfectly compatible with the Ryzen 9000 CPUs. For storage, we're going with a one terabyte Gen 4 M.2 just to run Windows on. It's the NM790. For the memory, I am going with two 32 gig sticks of G-Skill RipJaws S5, an Intel optimized memory kit, but works perfectly fine on AMD systems. To cool the 9800X3D, I went with the Thermorite AXP90 X47 Full Copper, a great affordable option if you're doing a gaming focused build. Since I will be prioritizing low noise, I'm swapping out the stock fan for the Noctua NF A9 14mm 92mm fan. For the power supply, I am using the Corsair SF750 80 Plus Platinum Modular Power Supply. I haven't gone with a newer ATX 3.0 or 3.1 power supply, but this should do just fine for this build. For those wondering why I decided to flip the PSU backwards, the correct way is to face the fans outward to intake air, but for aesthetic purposes, I decided to flip it backwards just for my own personal preference. If you decide to do this, you may see some temperature differences, but in my opinion, it doesn't affect the system overall. Now it's time to get all this inside the Form T1. And the easiest way to do it is to use M3 standoffs. And fortunately, the Form T1 does come with some standoffs as spares. Now, this is a non-destructive mod, and you are able to find some standoffs on Amazon for a really low price. And so I will be sure to link some down in the description for you. So to keep things simple, we want to create a space in the center of the T1 to allow warm air to escape. Next, we're going to configure the 5080 in the two slot position on the other side of the case and the motherboard IO plate to the 3.25 slot position, leaving just over 50 millimeters of space for the CPU cooler. This pushes the two hottest components to the opposite side of the case, creating a center void in the middle so that air can be easily exhausted by the top fans. Here's a breakdown on the side of the standoff you'll need to pull this off. Two 5mm standoffs to connect the lower motherboard to the spine. One 20mm standoff to connect the GPU riser bar to the sidebar on the GPU side. Two 25mm standoffs to secure the 5080 to the rear motherboard IO plate. Two 30mm standoffs to fasten the top of the motherboard to the other side of the GPU riser bar. You live with a really solid T1 frame with enough space for proper ventilation. However, the riser cable is at its limits and I'm actually surprised it fit without too much hassle. I did rig up some zip ties to weave through the riser to allow more heat to escape and not get trapped behind it. The RTX 5080 slots into place with no hassle, being just sure enough to clear the front and rear panels without removing them entirely, something you couldn't do with the previous three slot founders cards. You would notice that one of the 5080's fans are fully free from obstruction, while the other is partially blocked by the riser cable, but I think the zip tie mod actually helps in this regard. 
Now, to be sure that we're removing as much warm air as possible from the build, I'm using that 3D print fan shroud from Aga. The fan shroud is designed to focus warm air up and out the case, and it's designed specifically for the AXP90 X47 and X53, and your mileage may vary with other coolers in the same range. He is currently working on a revision to allow for more motherboards and maybe more coolers, so please check out his printables page. I'll link it down in the description. Mounted on the fan shroud are two 30 millimeter Fantax T30 fans, excellent fans that exhaust the warm air, especially out of the T1. I wanted to monitor the motherboard backplate thermal to see if a rear M.2 drive is actually doable, and I think it could actually work. We see the rear backplate reach 48 degrees under normal load and up to 58 degrees in a warm room and with a GPU overclock. My 5080 Simon was able to apply a plus 450 on the core and memory. With a couple sliders on MSI's afterburner with no artifacting or crashing, really impressive. We see anywhere between 3.2 and 3.3 gigahertz overclocked. I honestly think this is how the car should have released. Using DLSS 4 with a performance preset, graphics settings fully maxed out with path tracing enabled and no frame gen, we see the 5080 remains as cool as the 4080 Super at 63 degrees and decent thermals on the CPU when gaming. The 4080 Super gets 52 frames while the 5080 has a 10% improvement at 58 frames. The 5080 overclock manages to squeeze an additional 10%, a 20% improvement over the 4080 Super. We do see a GPU power increase over the 4080 Super by as much as 20%. Really impressive seeing that thermals barely changed. In time spot, we see a similar trend with the 5080 overclock scoring 24% over the stock 4080 Super. The thermals are also very similar with the gap widening a bit on the overclock 5080. All tests were noise normalized at 42 decibels and peaked at 52 decibels with the 5080 fans activated. Is it worth it to fit the RTX 5080 or 5090 inside the Form T1? Like I mentioned before, the RTX 50 series is a step in the right direction and a step backwards at the same time. Now, it does offer a two-slot design, but the cooler design conflicts with most sound style cases like the Form T1, Fractal Terra, and A4 but it shines in cases like the Fractal Ridge, for example. For me, the switch to the 50 series was a no-brainer when they announced the support for H.265 10-bit 422. Now I can start editing files without making proxies. Totally worth it in my opinion. When editing this video, playback was mostly smooth with the occasional hiccup, but that should improve once official support is added to Premiere Pro. If you can find the 5080 or 5090 Files Edition and willing to put in some extra effort, you can have a really beautiful and powerful build. The 5080 is very dense and it feels like a quality product. The 5080 does have more of a champagne color compared to the space gray on the 5090 FE. I definitely prefer the black color on the 4080 Super. It's not without its quirks. I would have loved to be able to take advantage of this smaller GPU size and use a larger CPU cooler like the Deepcool AM600. It's still possible, but I saw the motherboard backplate temperature reach 62 to 68 degrees. I'm not sure if that's maintainable long term. But after running all these tests, I found that the cooler on the 5080 is plenty competent to handle the temperatures inside the Form T1. I'm not sure what Voodoo AI Magic Nvidia did for the design of these cards, but it definitely worked. At the time of making this video, Form is working on an official travel kit for the RTX 5080 and 5090 Files Edition. And there's no worry yet whether there will be a pro art version as the car has yet to be released. What case should I test the 5080N next? The M2 or something completely different? Put your recommendations down in the comments. See you next time.